Jason Goble, and you're watching Chana 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 Podcast. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today, all the way from Miami, Florida. We have Jason Goble. Hi, Jason. Hi, how are you, Chana? I'm good. How How about you? Very good. Thank you. No complaints. So, uh, Jason, how's the situation there with uh, COVID and uh, everything? I mean, I think it's the same as, as everywhere else. You know, there's some quarantines and mask wearing and, and all that. I'm personally um, with the belief that there is a virus out there, but it's, it's really not as bad as they say it is. I think there's, you know, the bigger Agenda 21, New World Order, vaccine push. That's kind of where I think it is. Um, here, personally, you know, you see all the numbers, you see all the, the statistics, but I don't know anybody that's sick or that's had, you know, a fatal, you know, you know, dying from the virus or anything like that. So it's been interesting. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, it seems like they're trying to push every, all the agendas <laughs> using this virus, right? <laughs> exactly. There's more to it than the virus, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, same situation here. I think we had like, you know, we had a months of lockdown and now, right now, even now we are in a sort of a general quarantine. Um, actually, I think people are worried more than the virus, the economic situation, because, you know, people here are very poor, so they don't, they don't have a daily income coming in. So people are you know, will be hungry because I think that will be a bigger, bigger issue than, than the virus actually. I agree. I agree. And it's the same here, you know, it's affecting the, you know, it's affecting the, the working people, the, the regular common folk is uh, the ones that are really being affected by it. And um, it could potentially get worse, you know, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah. So, so Jason, uh, I got to know you, um, I think a few years ago, you, there was a show in, organized in Manila in sort of a tribute of you uh, when you were visiting Manila. Um, I wanted to go to that show, but it was quite far from, uh, you know, I think it was in Kainta, which was very far. And I was in another show and then I couldn't go after that because it was already too late to... <laughs> And, and, and the traffic in the Philippines is crazy. So, <laughs> I think yes, we should talk about the traffic. So, uh, so Jason, you were born in uh, Miami, or yes, I was born here in Miami. Right. So, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood, growing up, and then uh, how did you get into music? You know, I mean, uh, typical. Typical childhood, you know, my father uh, is from Cuba. He came over when he was younger, you know, with my grandparents and he met my mom. And um, so I had a pretty, pretty normal childhood. Uh, as far as music goes, um, my parents were pretty young and uh, my mom always had the radio on. So there was always music playing. And uh, I think that's where I really got the bug. You know, I used to listen to music and try to figure out what instrument was playing what and, you know, was fascinated how the instruments combined together to create, you know, one piece. And um, just, just from there was just always interested in, in music. Right. What were the like earliest bands, artists that you, 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 you liked? You know, because I started listening so young, you know, there, there was always, like, like I said, the radio was always on. And um, I was born in the 70s. A lot of the stuff that I heard was on the radio. So, I mean, like Casey and the Sunshine Band, Ohio Players. Right. Um, you know, my mom was young, so she was into dance music and um, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. And then, you know, the classic rock, Yes, Hendrix. And, wow. um, you know, it's it just... There was so much good music back then that uh, that it was um, influences coming from everywhere, you know. Yeah. So, how young were you when you pick, picked up the guitar? Uh, about eight years old. Wow. 
So uh, who who bought yeah, you yeah. the guitar? <laughs> My grandfather bought it for me. Well, so um my my brother is about four years older than me and he was also you know into music and when he was about 12 he got a bass he had a friend that was a guitar player right and um he got a bass and from there i was like man i i want an instrument i want something to play and um they're like hey i got we got a guitar player i'm a bass player why don't you get a drum set and my grandfather actually bought me a little drum set and i hated it, it i just i i not my instrument that lasted about a week and then um eventually for my birthday my grandfather bought me a guitar and that was it from there you know playing ever since so so the learning the guitar was all you learned by yourself or did you had lessons so when i when i got the when i got my first guitar my parents got me one lesson i had a guy that came out to the house he sat down he gave me some open chords uh, open string chords, a major scale, a blues scale, and just basically showed me, you know, how to position your hand on the guitar. Um, and then never saw him again. And so I played by ear until junior high. In junior high, they had a guitar class. So I go into the guitar class and I was already too advanced. They moved me to the advanced and I was still already, you know, so it was like it was like an hour practice session for me. So I really didn't get to study music until college. Right. Um, and I went into Miami Dade Community College, and you know we took some music courses. Uh, so me and the guys from Cynic, and um, that lasted a, a couple years. And then a Monstrosity album came up. You know we got signed to Roadrunner for Cynic, and uh, that was all. That was the extent of my music instruction right so so what was your like first performance you remember like when did you like first perform to a crowd oh my gosh my first performance was for that um was for that uh junior high um school the the, the guitar class since i could play and i could sing a little bit um the guitar ensemble Played and I stood up and played guitar and sang um, "Take It Easy" by the Eagles. <laughs> a, that, I think that was my first actual getting on stage. And I mean, it's a kid, you know, but uh, junior right. high ensemble or something like that. Yeah. So um, that's funny. It brings back memories. <laughs> yeah, Eagles is very nice band, actually. <laughs> So who were the like the influences for you for playing guitar like who do you look up to You know um it's interesting I guess if you say as far as guitarist uh Wes Montgomery was a a big one for me uh of course Alan Holdsworth you know was just cutting edge you know when I was uh, uh playing guitar um Schofield Grip, you know, uh, McLaughlin, you know, some of the old players like that. But, um, but I, I also got inspired by all different instruments. You know, I always figured, why do you have to like another guitarist? You know, I mean, that I loved trumpet players, Miles Davis, you know, and just loved the lines that they would create. So um, I listened to many other, you know, instruments as inspiration of music. But those are a few of the, of the ones that definitely uh, inspired me. Right. Um, so, Jason, what was the first? Uh, what was your like first band? Wow. You know, uh, again, my brother's influence. Um, a couple high school bands. I was, I was in the junior high, mm. and he was in high school in a high school band. And it's funny. I could sing better than I could play guitar at the time. So I ended up singing for the high school band and that was like, you know, we did, you know, covers, classic, you know, Journey and Iron Maiden and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and just one or two of those high school garage bands. And then, um, and then that was it. Then, then I met the guys from Cynic and we started on that path. Um, from there, I, I did do, after Cynic, I had kind of a, a band with a group of friends. Uh, we just did a demo and 
it was a uh, kind of a punk funk band called Funkhauser. And, um, but besides that, it was Cynic and then on to, you know, Portal, Gordian, and of course, Monstrosity. And right. So, uh, how did you meet the guys from Cynic? So, um, they actually had, had formed just a little bit before we met. And it was um, Paul, Sean, Mark Van Erp, Jack Kelly on vocals. And they were actually playing a show. We used to have these, um, you know, keg parties and they would just, you know, open up a big space, put a stage and a bunch of bands would play. And my brother's band was playing and Cynic actually was op opened up for my brother's band. Just well, played before them, didn't open up for them, but played before them. And um, at that time, my brother and I had kind of parted ways musically. He was heading more for the rock and R&B, and I was getting into the heavier music at the time. So it's when they, when Cynic finished playing and my brother was loading on, he passed Paul or Sean, I don't remember who, and said, bro, my, uh, you guys looking for a guitarist? My brother's into that pissed off music like you, you know, it'd be a good fit. Right. And they said, uh, they said, actually, I am. And my brother introduced us after the show. I went out and um, met him the next day. We jammed. And that was the beginning of the end right there. Right. Recently, you, you posted some of the photos from the early days of uh, Scenic, right? You, <laughs> you were so young. Yeah, back there, yeah. Right? yeah, we were really young. I think I met, I met him when I was like 16, 17 years old. Um, when we first met and kind of got together, um, I think that show that, that I had posted, I had to be like 19 years old, but it was a, a, a friend back from the day that had found the pictures and shared them with me. So I thought I would, you know, share them online and um, yeah. some classic, you know, photos for the Cynic fans. <laughs> you had your like, you know, your long hair and, you know. <laughs> Trying to grow it out back then, you know. <laughs> so uh, so you recorded the, with them a couple of demos, right? And then also the album Focus, which was released like 1993. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about recording this album? And did you feel, did you thought at that time that this will be a big album that everybody will look up to? No, definitely not. Um, but yeah, I do remember the recording uh experience the experience was good you know i mean recording an album on a budget there's stress there's stress time stress and um we we knew that since we were not only you know we had guitar we had drums we had guitar synth we had electronic drums we had you know heavy mm. vocals you know vocode vocals so we had a lot on our plate to accomplish in a short time um but it was an amazing experience you know, working with Scott Burns was amazing. He was um, just uh, a great guy and in the scene and he was completely into it. He really made the Focus record possible. He, he helped us in many ways. And, um, you know, you block, you block the studio by hours, you know, so you block an eight hour day. So we'd block the eight hour day, but he'd stay for free another five, six hours with us and we'd keep going and recording. And so, um, it was a it was a, a big learning experience and it was a great experience, um, an exciting experience, especially how young we were. I think I was twenty one at the time, you know. So, mm. um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was a great experience and um, you know, time I'll never forget. That's for sure. So you, now, as far as um, yeah. as far as us thinking it was going to be, you know a cool album. I think we knew we were doing something different, but we didn't know how it would be taken. Right. And, um, and actually the, our first, um, initial response was not that positive. It took quite a few years for the album to really catch on before people liked it and, and it started to pick up. So it was a hard start. <laughs> when you say that, I, I remember this, there was this Facebook post of, uh, earlier reviews of like Slayer albums and, you know, they, they didn't also had like good reviews back then. <laughs> they were like, you know, there were a lot of no. bad reviews. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and our tour was, um, 
uh, like our U.S. tour was with Cannibal, and you know that's a hard crowd. Right. Not everybody in Cannibal is into you know fusiony or the mix, you know, and so uh, right. it, it wasn't always uh, the best response, let's say, but it was fun. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, so what happened with Cynic? So you 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 moved on from Cynic. Why why did you moved on? Uh, what happened? So we recorded Focus. We toured. Um, we really didn't get the the best response. You know, we didn't. You know, we we. Gosh, we met like I said, seventeen ish, and um, by this time touring, we were. 23, you know, 20, 23, 24 years old and um, trying to survive. And um, it was just a tough experience. And the music industry really doesn't support the bands. And, you know, we toured and came back penniless. And it was a great experience. But um, it was really hard, you know, to, to, um, to keep it going. So we came back and we thought, you know, let's go a different direction. Let's create some music that maybe could make some money and could have a good response. And um, that's when we came up with Portal. Mm. And we were actually being shopped by Atlantic Records. And they were interested in giving us a deal. We had an A&R rep flying out to see us and we could not get out of our Roadrunner contract um, to take the Atlantic Record deal. So that fell through too. You know, I was, um, recently married, had my daughter, life started to kick in. And it was just like, I have to support my family. I have to start uh, um, being around. And the industry was just not, uh, not too supportive, I guess. So um, I decided at that time, I, you know, I was just going to play music for me and enjoy music for music. And, and I took a break for uh, uh, professionally for, for many years. Right. Um, so you also recorded the album Imperial Doom with Monstrosity, right? With uh, George Fisher. So can you yeah. tell me about that? Uh, so was George Fisher already in Cannibal Corpse at this time or he, he was not, right? He was before this, before Cannibal Corpse. No, he, he was not with Cannibal. Um, you know, it's funny because where was he? He was from... Um, Jeez, I forget where he's from. Somewhere cold, up up near New Yorkish or or something like that. And I remember he just kind of popped up on the scene. I remember the first time I saw George, I was at the Cameo Theater in Miami. It was some metal show, and there's a pit going. And in the middle of the pit, there's this guy standing. And you know he's big guy now, but he was stout. He was stocky, you know. Mm. And he's standing in the middle of the pit. He's got this neck. He's got like veins bulging out. He's singing all the words to the song, banging his head, head spinning, and nobody's messing with him. Okay. They're just kind of circling around him and he's just there going for it. And later on in the scene, I ended up meeting him and, and, um, Marilyn, he was from Maryland. And, um, so he just popped up in the Florida scene. I don't remember exactly how he got down there or if he, were, if he came down because the scene was getting big. And mm -hmm. um, uh, then he ended up hooking up with the monstrosity guys. So I think that that was one of his first real connections. And then Cannibal came, you know, came after that. But, um, but yeah, working with the monstrosity guys, you know, they had a warehouse just down, down the way from us for a little bit. Mm. Um, Lee and Mark were, were over there. Mark Van Erp used to play in Cynic, was uh, one of the original members. So we were all friends and they ended up getting the record deal and they didn't have a guitar player. And at that time, uh, Paul and Sean got the opportunity to work with Dath and I think Tony was already talking with Atheist and um, they were looking for guitars and they asked me if I wanted to play on the album. I was like, oh yeah, I would love to. And um, and, you know, they're great old friends and great guys. So it was a great experience playing with them fast, man. Those boys are fast. And uh, I remember our first rehearsal, I got together. And just the speed that we were playing at, man, by the end of the night, my forearm was like just throbbing and, you know, um, just from having to, to riff so fast. I had to speed up for them. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. But 
uh, great experience, great album, great guys, you know, and uh, it's sad that the Cynic album came out right after. I played one show with them at the Milwaukee Metal Fest, never got to play with them again. You know, I would have loved to have toured with them, but um, we got to deal with Roadrunner and it didn't end up working out. But, um, uh, but yeah, a lot of love to those guys and, and great experience. Right. Fun album. So, so you, uh, you reti sort of retired from the music scene in 2004, right? <laughs> Around 2004? Or? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say? No, you, you kind of decided to like retire from the music scene for some time, right? So, and what did yeah. you do uh, once um, you retired? I, um, well, you know, at that time I was, I was raising a family. I was in the corporate world. I was managing a, a natural stone company in Portland, Oregon, and, uh, had a lot of life going on. And, um, so, you know, I always played guitar. I always had a guitar around, but I didn't play, you know, that much anymore. I wasn't really uh, recording at home anymore and, and decided that I don't think I'm going to do anything professional anymore. And I, um, I've always had a passion for photography. Hmm. So I actually started doing photography again. I opened up a photography business and then I started doing some uh, artwork with, which was a mix of photography and, and art. I started doing that for a while. And um, so I was always doing something creative, but, um, uh, but yeah, just wasn't really in the scene and didn't have people to play with and so decided to take a, a break and choose a, another creative outlet for a while right so jason how did you uh, end up in philippines you came to the philippines right yes yeah um so i had some changes in my life and i had um i had an opportunity to take some time and to travel so I actually traveled Southeast Asia for about a year. Right. And I started off in Viet Vietnam. My, um, my kids went with me. My son, Jason, is 21. My daughter, Jenny, is, uh, is, is pushing her 30s now. It's crazy. And um, we started off in Vietnam. We bought a couple motorcycles. We drove from the south to the north of Vietnam and um, had a great experience. And then they, uh, they headed home. And I continued uh, to backpack for about a year. Now, the Philippines was on my list to go. Um, my uh, father married a Filipina when I was young, and so I have a Filipina stepmother uh, and two Philippine uh, stepsisters that right. have been in my life, you know, since I was very young. So it was definitely on my list to, um, you know, one of the places to go visit. But after Vietnam, I went to Thailand. And I was trying to figure out, you know, hey, where, where am I going to go next? Um, and I got a message. I got a message on Facebook from um, Jordan Angelis and uh, uh, Jamie, gosh. Salvai. Sal 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 yeah. Sal Salvai. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so they had contacted me. And, and then Jordan actually, I think, reached out first. And he asked me if I was planning on going to the Philippines. And I said, yeah, I was. And he's like, listen, um, you know, we're, we're fellow musicians and we, we like your music and um, we'd love to, if you come to the Philippines to meet. And he said, and also, uh, by the way, I'm a travel agent. So if you're heading to other places, I can help you with that. And uh, on my trip, I, I had just decided, hey, if opportunities come or if something comes up and arise, you know, I was going to take the opportunity and go. So I was like, okay, I guess Philippines is the next place I'm going. So uh, I stayed out my visa in Thailand and bought a ticket over to the Philippines and um, uh, headed, uh, headed over to Manila and uh, Yarden met me there and uh, that was the beginning of an absolutely incredible experience in the, in the Philippines. So what was your like first impression uh, coming out of the Philippines, Manila airport? <laughs> you know, um, Pretty, pretty crazy. Manila's big city and pretty chaotic. And right. uh, it was similar to, uh, to flying into Kolkata in it India. Uh, walking out of there was also crazy <laughs> and, you know, just chaos and people and all that. And uh, it's funny, Manila out of, or the Philippines, out of all the places I went, 
uh, I think had most potential for me to get lost or get in trouble. It's a big city and it's a tough city. Right. And I was very blessed that I actually had someone there to greet me and, uh, you know, they helped set me up with a place to stay. And so it was, uh, it was amazing, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty crazy big city. The traffic is worse than probably anywhere I've seen, at least in my experience traveling. Right. Um, but the Philippine culture is the beautiful thing. I mean, just absolutely loving, warm people, welcoming into your, you into your home. Um, being half Cuban, there's a lot of similarities because of the, the Spanish, you know, uh, tied to the Philippines. And the food is similar and the, the attitude and the way, I guess out of all the places in Asia that I went to, the Philippines were the most like my experience with uh, my Cuban culture where you know, they joke real hard, they get in your face, they give you a hard time. And, you know, it's just uh, uh, a very in your face and very loving, warm culture. So it was, uh, that's what really embraced me in my experience over there. Right. So this, uh, this show that they organized, uh, they actually played some of your old, uh, old songs and you, you, you got to perform with them, right? Yeah. So, it was a group of, you know, a couple bands, a couple mix of, you know, players from the, the scene there. And they all got together and they played some monstrosity. They played some cynic. They played some portal. Mm. And uh, it was an amazing event. It was basically an, an event in, in honor of me. And I was completely humbled and blown away. Uh, in my travels, I had no expectations of really having any big music tie or anything like that. And um, throughout my travels, I, I did have a lot of, of people from the music industry reach out throughout in many countries, but uh, the Philippines was probably, you know, the most intense experience that I had with people and I made some absolutely wonderful friends and when I got there, they took me into their home and they took time off and we traveled a little around a little bit around uh, around the Philippines together and um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. So also, uh, what, about, what do you think about the Filipinos musically? Because I think they are, they are very talented also, right? In music, Filipinos. Absolutely. <laughs> I was actually blown away when I got there. Um, the amount of talent, the talent is everywhere. Everybody can sing. Everybody can play a guitar. They sit down, you know, line up two or three tables. So you got, you know, 20, 30 people sitting at the table and a guitar just passes around. And I'll be damned if every player cannot, every person cannot play a song, some better than others. You know what I mean? But um, uh, I, I was, I was blown away at the talent in the Philippines, you know, and, and met so many good players and, um, uh, you know, got a few that, uh, that I, look forward to, to doing some work with in the future musically. Right. So, so doing this, uh, playing with them and then did this like kind of ignite again, your musical, uh, you know, to, to something to do with music. Yeah. You know, the, the whole trip to throughout Southeast Asia is I was taking some time to, uh, to reconnect with myself and refine myself. And I was backpacking alone throughout uh, all these countries and meeting people. Um, meeting people as I go. Jeez, I lost my, my train of thought here, Jana. <laughs> Sorry, refresh me on the question, man. I, I, I lost my no, I was I was saying, so going back and then they are honoring you, you're performing with them and then did this ignite a feeling okay i i think i need to start yeah. playing guitar again maybe do music yeah. again so so that was it so the trip was really uh, uh you know just me kind of trying to reconnect with myself but i actually reconnected with music and met many musicians on the way but the philippines was was the uh country that really inspired me uh to play and, and a lot of it had to do with that event a lot of it had to do with um so originally they said hey you know would you would you mind if we did an event for you? And I was like, wow, I'd be honored, you know, thank you. And then they said, um, 
hey, well, hey, you know, would you mind if we had some bands play some of your music? Oh, that'd be great. And then they say, hey, you know, would you want to play some music? And I'm like, ooh, man, I, I'm rusty. I haven't played. I've been traveling, you know, and um, so it's funny. I was uh, hanging out with Yarden and staying at us, or we were doing a little traveling. And he says, listen, man, are you sure you don't want to play? And I said, listen, I, you know, I, I, I'm really rusty and and he kept pushing. So I said, okay, man. And I said, listen, let's go back to your house. Let's sit down. Let's pull out a couple guitars and let's, you know, let's jam and let's play. And so, you know, they were hoping that I would play a cynic song. I hadn't played the cynic music in years. So I remembered parts, but uh, wasn't fluid uh, at it. So after jamming and, and him, you know, giving me a hard time, I ended up telling him, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll improv solo over how could I, you know, at the end and uh, at least I can join and play with some of the guys. So um, I ended up doing that, but but it was kind of just jamming with those guys and just them pushing and just seeing, um, you know, the appreciation for the music that I had done in the past. I had no idea that I'd had so many people that really were touched by the music that I had done. And um, so that experience and that, you know, that event and jamming with the guys and all that really inspired me to, um, pick up and start playing some music again, you know? So the Philippines had a big part of that. Right. So um, what are you been working on right now? Like you've been playing, I see, I also saw some uh, live, uh, you did a jam with Filipino artists also, right? You, you put out a video, I, I saw. Yeah, yeah, we were all stuck in quarantine. I was talking to some of, uh, some of my friends over there and, um, um, at that event, uh, I made a friend, Dupax, and his daughter sang one of the Portal songs, Gwen. Right. And um, she did a fantastic job and, and, you know, was such a sweet gal. And it was such an honor to have her uh, sing at the event. Um, so, you know, we had become friends. Well, Dupax does um, music uh, sequencing. He sequences for like karaoke music and MIDI sequencing and all that. So he had actually done one of the portal songs and Gwen wanted to sing over it. And then a few of us started talking and uh, they asked if I would play on it and we just do a little, you know, a little remake of the portal song. I actually just finished recording it yesterday. Um, so we also did the Whitney Houston song. That's the one that you saw. Right. And uh, from there, we're now going to do a little portal song, but it, it, uh, it was, um, just kind of improv. We were all stuck in quarantine. We just did it on our cell phones, put the music in, played to it, and then they mixed it and put it out. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, and um, like just like an impromptu little thing that we did. But I, I do hope to work with them more in the future. Gwen's a great singer and would love to have her sing on something original, you know, one day with me. Right. So, uh, Jason, uh What's your message to your your fans, your Filipino fans, especially? I I, I believe they're they're more than fans. They're actually friends, right? <laughs> They're family, man. They took me into their home, and you know, and there's there's so many, um, so many, too many to name. Uh, but of course, uh, Yarden, uh, James. There was you know Les, Arnie, Irwin. You know, uh, actually. Actually, my girlfriend, um, Shekinah Kabitanan, is in uh, the Philippines. She lives in Manila. Right. Um, so, yeah, so many people to send, uh, send love to over there. I made so many friends. And, I, you know, I was there for maybe a month, a month and a half on and on. So, on and off. So, I really um, got some time there. But thank you. Thank you would be the biggest thing I could say. And I love you guys. I appreciate you. I miss my, uh, you know, my Pinoy family. And... Uh, can't wait to come and visit you guys again and uh, watch you, you know, drink crazy Red Bull and play guitar around the, uh, not Red Bull, uh, Red Horse. Red that Horse. was it. <laughs> Red Horse beer and, you know, play guitar around the table. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jason, this is this was a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, thanks for joining this podcast. Uh, uh, looking forward to more music from you and your collaborations and putting it out. So, uh yeah so keep safe uh keep making music <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you for the opportunity to uh to be on your uh, channel here and um 
you know, uh, it was uh, a great pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, thank you, Jason. You got it. Uh, let me give a little, um, if I could, a little info here. Uh, I do have a couple projects coming up that uh, I'd like to share. Um, uh, doing a few solos. I did a, um, I've already done a solo which uh, on some upcoming albums, uh, one for Bestial Invasion, one for Bioaggression um, on their upcoming albums. And I've got one that I'm going to do uh, coming up here in the next uh, week or so. I'm going to start with uh, Savage Deity out of uh, Thailand. Um, so look for those. And, and thanks to those guys for giving me the opportunity to play on the album. Uh, also, I am hoping to, um, to see this released pretty soon, but Sean Reinert uh, was working on a song with Timon and Robin from uh, Our Oceans and Ex 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 Exvius. Mm. And uh, the song was never finished, but Sean did actually record some drum tracks, a scratch tracks, and uh, Timon and Robin finished the song. And they actually, there was one open spot for a solo and they gave me the honor of playing uh, on that song. So heads up, um, there's gonna be one more song coming out with, uh, you know, Sean Reinert playing on him, playing on it, and uh, it's going to be released. His husband has it. It's been recorded and, and mixed. It's ready to go. He's going to be releasing it at some point here in the future. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. We'll be posting it on social media and uh, everything. But that's a that's a really cool song, and it was a really cool final project, uh, an opportunity to play with Sean. And uh, last but not least. Um, working on a project with Santiago from uh, Agora, also um, Matt Thompson and Alan Goldstein, who also played on the Agora album. Uh, it's not going to be necessarily a, a metal album. It's going to be more of a fusion album. Mm. And um, uh, actually, uh, my brother's probably going to play bass on a, on a couple of songs, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, haven't mm. got to do anything on a professional level with him. So uh, looking forward to that, but um, that's just in the start, but we're getting things going and going to probably have some other guest players on there, but those are the, the core players for now, and uh, that's what I have on the table right now, but actually have a couple other projects coming up, um, some collaborations with some other people that I'm looking forward to doing, so, so mm -hmm. we'll have some new music coming out for you guys pretty soon, and, you know, thank you and, and all the fans and everybody for the years of support and for welcoming me, me back, you know, we'll see if I can, uh, keep up, uh, keep what I had going on before. Right. Right. Uh, tell everyone, Jason, how they can reach you on social media. Um, on social media, just, just, uh, my name, Jason Goble. And then I also have Jason Goble musician page, uh, on Facebook. And then uh, same thing, I have an Instagram account. I don't use it mo mo uh, too much. Probably Facebook is the one that I use the most, but it um, uh, should be a pretty easy find, just my name and Jason Go uh, Goble or Jason Goble Musician for uh, two pages there. Right. So thanks, Jason. Thanks for joining. Uh, stay safe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, so much for having me, Jan. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.